What is going on? Hey, Miss Agnes, uh, you feeling okay Stop today? Stop talking! You guys feeling uneasy about Agatha all along? Yeah, me too. But before we dive in, let me confess something. I'm a huge Marvel nerd, like borderline obsessive. I follow every twist and turn, just waiting for Marvel to throw something crazy at us. Doesn't matter if it's fast or slow, I'm convinced there's always something awesome in store with each movie or show. For me, Marvel's all about entertainment. Plain and simple, it keeps me curious, makes me laugh, sometimes gets me emotional, even spooks me a little. So, yeah, most of it's pretty solid. Some shows were fantastic. Avengers Endgame, Deadpool and Wolverine, Avengers Infinity War, you name it. And, well, others. Let's just say they missed the mark. Looking at you, She-Hulk, Eternals, Secret Invasion, but in the grand scheme, it's all good. Except when Marvel starts doing too much, if you know what I mean. Like really pushing certain messages into every film and series. Case in point, this one. He worries. Aww. Come on, teen. Really? You're breaking my heart here. I mean, can't you just come find me? I'm young, cute, gorgeous, and guess what? Still single. What do you even see in that guy? Wake up. Huh. Okay, teen. We need to have a real talk. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm a Marvel fan through and through. The kind that's going to stay up all night waiting for the next Agatha All Along episode to drop. Then go make hype videos, theories, reviews. You know the drill. I'm here for the long haul. But I have a serious question. Teen, is this series made for hardcore Marvel fans like us? Or for like a small group that you guys call diverse or whatever? LGBTQ plus maybe? Are we just not big enough of a market anymore? Like are fans like us being pushed aside for a new crowd? Does Marvel really think, oh, these longtime fans, they don't matter anymore? It feels like they think if they add enough diverse characters, We'll just accept it without questioning anything. But what about our loyalty? Are we just supposed to watch while they focus on a group that might not even care as much? Is that really the plan? Because if it is, that's pretty rough. Here's the thing. I watched Agatha All Along episodes one and two, frame by frame to make sure I got everything down for this review. Yep, frame by frame. But at some point, I couldn't help but get curious about Wiccan and Hulkling. I mean, if you're Wiccan, Hulkling's gotta be just around the corner, right? So I watched and ugh, boyf, who's this guy? Your boyfriend? He always worries. What the heck is that? You hear that, teen? You've got your fans disappointed over here. What is happening? Teen, are you still with me? Hey, teen. <laughs> Guys, I think teen just tapped out. Close the video or something. Thank God you're all still here. Like I said, Marvel's entertainment to me, just entertainment. And at the end of the day, the success of a show is all about whether or not we feel entertained, right? I mean, that's all it's supposed to be, yeah? It's no secret that Marvel and Disney have been pushing diversity pretty hard these last few years. And sure, people are saying it's part of why some of the recent films have flopped. And yeah, the criticisms are flying left and right. But here's the thing, I don't really care, I mean, yeah, sometimes the LGBTQ plus stuff feels a bit much, but if the show is entertaining, then it's still got my attention. It's all just for fun, right? So is it wrong for Marvel to weave diversity into their stories? Nah, I'm not here to debate that. But let's take a second and compare it to something Marvel absolutely nailed. Remember Deadpool and Wolverine? That movie brought in diversity too, but who's gonna sit here and call that film bad? Nobody. That was the gift of 2024 with nonstop laughs and action. I'll never forget the roars of laughter in the theater. Everyone had a blast. And if there are people saying Deadpool and Wolverine was soulless, just a bunch of jokes strung together, come on, man. This is a movie made for everyone. Criticism just shows how much fans care about it, which is a good thing. And how did Deadpool and Wolverine respond to all that critique? With a smile, they took it in stride, had a good time with it, what worked for Deadpool and Wolverine was that they promised us a good time from the very start. The marketing was like, oh, this movie is gonna be wild, hilarious, ridiculous, you guys have to see it. And guess what? It totally delivered. Plus, of course, Deadpool and Wolverine showcased diversity. Deadpool's pansexuality was in there as part of the fun. But they didn't hit us over the head with it, right? They weren't out here giving us a lecture. It was just part of the character. 
So now Agatha All Along comes out following the huge success of Deadpool and Wolverine. Naturally, expectations are sky high. After a few years of Marvel movies that flopped, Deadpool and Wolverine brought the excitement back. It was 11 years I've been trying to get this movie made, and, and then uh, about a year and a half ago, somebody accidentally leaked it on the internet. Which is, but I gotta admit, the marketing for Agatha all along has been weird. They had a review embargo before it dropped, and people were scratching their heads over that. Then there's the whole vibe of the series, so purple. Don't get me wrong, I was expecting to see some gay themes here. I had a feeling we'd be getting Wiccan in this series, and we all know Wiccan's been Marvel's gay icon for a while now. He's Wanda's kid, Billy Kaplan, and everyone knows he's dating Hulkling. Fans are aware. That's why I had to rewatch episode two a couple times. I had to let you guys know, there's a good chance that dude on Teen's phone is Hulkling. But honestly, Teen and Agatha's expressions in that scene were enough to kill my appetite. He worries. And again, with the whole purple vibe, fans can see where this is going. But come on, Wiccan, Deadpool, Fastos, and a bunch of other LGBTQ plus characters in Marvel aren't the problem for us fans, as long as their identities aren't being shoved down our throats as some sort of campaign. Diversity? Don't get it twisted. Okay. We all agree it's important, but in a way that lets everyone enjoy the show, no matter who they are, what their background is, it's about making sure everyone can sit down and be entertained without feeling singled out. That's the whole point of diversity, Thanks. right? <laughs> but lately, it feels like that very idea is making a lot of us fans feel left out. Like Marvel's telling us, oh, this isn't really made for you anymore. And that's kind of sad. Anyway, back to Agatha all along. I think the series has potential. There's a good chance it'll get better by the finale. My issues with teen and the whole gay angle that's just me venting my disappointment. I mean, you know, I've already said in previous videos that I really enjoyed the first two episodes. And yeah, the slow pacing, cringe jokes, weird script, and predictable story. Come on, if you're a Marvel fan, this stuff is old news. Just roll with it and enjoy the ride. For those of you who follow the MCU, skipping this series might not be the smartest move. You could miss out on some key plot points for the next big thing, maybe Avengers Doomsday or Avengers Secret Wars. You don't want to miss out, do you? But I think there's more going on here than just a new episode. Marvel is clearly testing the waters with this series, pushing boundaries, and seeing how much they can get away with. Yes, that's it. And honestly, that's what Marvel has always been good at, keeping us on our toes. Maybe Agatha all along is Marvel's way of evolving their stories to cater to an even broader audience, but they have to remember their core fans too, the ones who've been there since day one. And before I wrap this up, can we just agree on one thing? Please make sure Agatha's got clothes on in the upcoming episodes. Seriously, I'm still trying to figure out how she even showed up after shaking off Wanda's spell like that. Even the comics don't have anything this ridiculous for her. Anyway, that's been bugging me. For those of you still watching, I appreciate you sticking around. Like you know, I'm committed to filling this channel with reviews, theories, and all the MCU madness. So make sure you've subscribed so you don't miss out on any of the good stuff. Don't worry, like it says on the channel banner, I'll be dropping fresh Agatha all along and MCU videos daily. The show must go on, folks. Thanks for hanging out with me today. If you're just as curious about what's next for Scarlet Witch and want to dive deeper into the magical world of Marvel, check out my video on the Witch's Road Breakdown. It's got all the juicy details and theories you won't want to miss. Catch you next time, my coven!